everyone. Discuss uh, forceps selection for extraction of primary teeth. Okay, so before we go to the forceps, we must understand how to load a LA cartridge. Okay, so this is a metal syringe, and this comes in various forms. The one that I have is this one. All right, how you open this is you pull the plunger, and this rotates. Okay, and then you put your LA with the stainless steel part towards the inside and the rubber plunger to the outside correct then you need to keep pull this back pull this back and then all right then the needle then to twist and pull and then this goes inside push and then Tighten it. All right. Then express some LA solution through the needle, so you know that the needle is not blocked. All right. And then you are done with the loading part. Okay. Same thing. Unload. Twist. Pull. This goes into the sharp bin. Okay. For now, we don't have sharp bin. So I'm just gonna put it back. Right. And then. Pull this out, and we are done. Okay. <laughs> Both can, man. <work. laughs> Understood? All right. So let's see one of you do it. Let's see you do it. This instrument here. This is periosteal elevator. It's not any elevator. Periosteal elevator. Okay. So this is actually used for elevating periosteum from the bone when raising a flap. But we are using it for separating the gingival fibers around the tooth. Okay. So that we free the tooth of the gingival fibers. Okay. So we can do our beaks or the forceps can go deeper into the gingival surface. Okay. Now. Among all this, can make two groups of similar looking forceps. Make two groups of similar looking forceps. Two groups of similar looking forceps. They look should look the same. I need two groups only, not four. Very good. So these are one group of forceps. These are another group of forceps. All right. So what is the difference between this group and this group? Correct. So these forceps basically have their beaks at and right angle to the handle, mm -hmm. while their beaks are on the same plane, right? So these are for maxillary. Mm -hmm. These are for the mandibular. So when I give you a box and I tell you to pick up a mandibular, you must pick one of these. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now let's take them down and tell me among all this which is the different one, which is the odd one. Very good. So this is the odd one. Why is this an odd one? Very good. The shape is the beaks are thicker, and then we have this pointy head in the beak. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is for the molars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where does this big pointy beak go? Mm -hmm. In the furcation area. So that is why. So this is molars done. Right. That leaves us with incisors and canines. Right. So now, tell me the difference between these two. Okay. And what else? Close and check. Hmm. There's a space is there, right? 
so this is for canine this is for incisors done all right clear now so let's do an exercise 85 select of forceps for 85 extracting 85 very good Seven three. Very good. Okay. Answer. All right. So we keep this away. We come back to this. Now I want you to make two groups of similar looking forceps. Very good. Why are these different from this? Correct. So they have basically. Two curvatures, while this is only straight or just curved, right? Mm -hmm. So this is for the posterior ones. Okay, so this is anterior ones. Mm -hmm. Now, using the same logic that we used here, can you tell me which one is for maxillary and which is for canine? This is for the central space. Which is incisor. Very good. So these are for the incisors. Okay, mm -hmm. and how do you know this is absolutely straight? Mm -hmm. Absolutely straight incisors. This is slightly curved, so this has to be canine. Okay. Then, to the incisors canine, what is remaining is molars. Now, what do you think? Which of these two will be molars? Yeah, very good. Why do you say this one will be molars? Very good. Broad, and this got a sharp peak. So the sharp peak again goes into the fascia area. So this is for the molars. Right. So why is why is this odd man out? Where do you think we use this one? Very good. Root stumps. Why? Because if you close them, the peak touches. That means it is able to catch hold of something that is very small. So this is for your root pieces, posterior root pieces. All right. That's it. Right. So let's. You have not tried, right? You have not tried. Both of you. Let's see. Eight one. Eight one. Eight one. Okay. Just visualize where is eight one. Eight one. Very good. Five six seven eight. Eight. Must know which tooth are we talking about? Six five. Six five. Yes. How confident are you? Correct. Has to be that one. Among this, has to be that one. Okay. That is correct. We'll do one last one. Seven three. Seven three, seven three, seven quadrant third two, which is very good. Good choice. Okay, because the peak doesn't touch, it's more wider. All right, we'll do the last one and we will have root piece of seven five. Piece of seven five. Yes, that's a good choice. Okay, right. Don't confuse with root piece of maxillary six five five five. Okay, so this is it. In the final exam, you must know the post-operative instructions that you must give for, especially for a child patient. Okay, and then you must also know how to calculate maximum dose of LA that can be given for a child. What is the maximum recommended dose for the lignocaine? 4.4 mg per kg. So if your child is 10 kgs, how many can you 
milligram of uh, adrenaline you can give the glucan 4.4 per kg so for 10 kg 44 milligram okay can do that much calculation don't worry about that part okay for this much you must know the recommended dose and how you calculate the recommended dose for each cartridge you have 20 milligram of lignocaine in it so maximum you can give is two two cartridges Okay, so that is it from us. Thank you.